Howdy all of you delicious people. I'm here today to review Supergirl 1984. Funny enough, there was a Wonder Woman with the supposed time period of 84, which wasn't all that great. But we have a Supergirl movie that came out in 1984 that I think is pretty good a pretty solid good movie uh really i like the fact that it's kind of like supergirl against sorceress kind of film uh i like the fact that we have this like broken down amusement park that we kind of play around with in this movie uh i really like the fact that uh we kind of dispel the fact that there seemingly are still certain parts of Krypton that are still alive even after the planet was to be supposedly destroyed. Uh, like, in this movie, we are to focus on a city left from the explosion of Krypton uh, called Argo City. Uh, and some people may not actually know that there actually is another Kryptonian city that I think uh, Brainiac had discovered and kept uh, in Superman Unbound, where eventually he kept Kandor. So I guess technically there are two different cities full of Kryptonians that uh, eventually, like, had survived from Krypton. And so, like, because, like, for me, like, I kept wanting to call Argo City, like, Kandor, because I was thinking, I'm like, well, this should be the one city that Supergirl is from, and because another story would tell me that this sh city should be Kandor, but it's not. It's Argo City in this film. Weird. Uh, but anyways, we go through this film and really we are to showcase that this girl is Superman's cousin, but we never actually see Superman in this entire film. Basically, this film was built to just have Superman there as a photo on a wall somewhere, but that's all, that's it. That's like, there's not going to be a cameo of Superman in this movie, uh, kind of passing the torch or whatever in this film. Uh, really, it's just Supergirl just seeing a poster upon her wall and like saying that she's related in paper to Clark Kent which wasn't even done by Clark Kent. And, like, that's that's a bulk of it all. So, uh, but I think that this movie is really interesting. I think, uh, I think that this movie actually is pretty decent. Yeah, we kind of go with, like, certain characters that have to be, like, we have to go with, uh... Uh, we have to go with Lucy Lane in this movie. So it's basically like Lois Lane's like cousin twice removed from <laughs> that. They're probably never going to use a reference ever again until probably they're going to go into a Supergirl show or something and probably use every single bullet in the gun that they can to find some kind of reference of something somewhere. We get Jimmy Olsen from the Superman movie in, in this movie, so at least there's some kind of something here that reminds us of the Christopher Reeves Superman films. But that's all we're going to get. Um, but I kind of like this movie, like, like I said, it kind of has like Supergirl versus Sorcery, or in this case, Selina. Um... But yeah, like, I kind of like how they, uh, like, they do have to come up with a goofy reason for why, uh, Kara has to leave Argo City, aka whatever's left of Krypton. They come up with a goofy, goofy reason for why she has to leave, but, like, kind of once we get past that, I think the movie is a fairly decent movie. Besides the whole, like, Supergirl, like, fighting the Invisible Man, technically, in this movie. <laughs> Which kind of just looks just goofy, but she kind of defeats this this villain fairly interesting, so we'll give her points on that. Because um, overall, I think this movie is just fun. 
Like, this movie is a fun watch. Uh, really, it kind of, like, it's one of those movies where, like, I overall enjoy it just because, like, it does some interesting kind of shots. Uh, like, having uh, Supergirl go through this one, uh, like, uh, big cylinder-like thing and having her come back back out as her alter ego I think was kind of fun uh, having them go into uh, like some ways of I guess like not exactly like copying and pasting Superman in this movie I think I could enjoy the only problems that I probably have with this film is there's a ton of flying sequences like there isn't much of really Kara like learning every bit of her power which thank goodness that she doesn't do that like it doesn't go into the full range of her having to like man I need to take an entire like an hour and a half to understand every Kryptonian power that I have <laughs> and then also I have to come into the midst of kryptonite that never actually happens in this movie whatsoever but uh we do get like this tries to keep itself in the Superman-like bubble, but, like, tries to do a lot of different things, which I can applaud this movie for. Um, we do get uh, some ref references of the probably the first two Superman movies. There's some stuff from those in here. So, uh, like, as, like, things that are used, maybe not things that are like I'll, I'll have to explain some things when I get into, into the movie further but yeah I thought that this movie was fun this movie is a fun film uh if you've never seen it before definitely go and check it out uh it doesn't matter if it was done in 84 I think that this is still a good movie um some people might have a laugh at it some people may not like it uh, some people might just, like, especially when it gets towards the end there, when, like, there's that just, like, giant hands that are in the screen, and you have Supergirl in the screen as well, like, that looks goofy, but everything else, I think, for the most part, like, man, did they try to do some interesting things with Supergirl, and I can applaud them for that. So, with that said, I think it's that coveted time to go into spoilers about this movie. I, I explained some of this movie and I teed it up a little bit, but I think it's that coveted time to go into spoiler time. Spoiler time. It's about the time I'm going to spoil this movie. I probably didn't tee this movie up good enough, but I think I kind of talked about this movie bits and pieces of it. But now it's that coveted spoiler time. So uh, let's get into it. So we are to have... Uh, Supergirl to at the very beginning of this to be in Argo City. It seems that uh, Kara is talking to Zoltar, who is Peter O'Toole, and it seems that Zoltar is going and uh, making things that look like things from Earth. Like he is sculpting using this Omega Hedron like device. And this, like, wand-ish, like, thing. Um, he is making things that seem to look like Earth. Like, he's making, like, insects, or he is making trees, and showcasing it throughout the entire part of Argo City. And so, Supergirl is to mention his altar. It's like, well, why can't you actually make an actual tree? And Zoltar is like, well... I don't have the actual technology for that to work. Like, I can just have it be echoing what that actually is, but I can't actually make one. It's not, like, it's not an exact science, sadly enough. So, uh, Allura is to uh, go and talk to Zoltar and kind of mention that like, the Omega Hedron is not a device that it that should be played around with. Uh, because this Omega Hedron is like a... Uh, is like a... 
a power source that is to uh, be a significant thing for Argo City. And so we have Zoltar who ends up tossing uh, the Omega Hedron to Kara for Kara to try to use with her wand-ish like thing as uh, Zoltar is to uh, put a, uh, a wrist indicator of where this Omega Hedron is on uh, Kara's wrist. So uh, we have Kara who is to play with this thing to accidentally have the Omega Hedron get shot out of this Argo city and nobody's thinking hey, we should probably put, like, a, a, a seal or something on that. Like, no. Like, immediately they're thinking, it's like, oh, my God, our our light source or our resource is now gone. Oh, no. We now have to go and find out where that is. Like, we have to go somehow and find that resource or all is doomed. Or really just, like, they just assume that everyone is doomed because there's no way that they can go in the vast amount of space to find that thing and so Zoltar once the resource is gone he is to immediately either assess one or two things that he should go out in the deepest deepest of space to try to get it or um that because of what he had let l be lost out to space he needs to actually go into the phantom zone and and live in agony forever, uh, or for eternity. So, Kara is to go on her own and go into the spacecraft that I guess would be similar to Superman's and eventually get shot out to eventually track down the Omega Hedron. And so, uh, since Kara is doing that, I guess Zoltar, uh, Zoltar just decides, well, I'm just going to go and head to the Phantom Zone. This is going to suck, but see you guys later. Cheers, everybody. I'm going to go and get hurt for the rest of my life. Or however long that that will be. So, Kara gets shot out to... Uh, to go, and of course, where else would she go? Earth. Because, I guess, this Meg Megahedron just decides, Well, hey, like, I'm going to go and, like, go into find Selena who's having a picnic outside and I'm just going to go dump myself into like her gravy or her bowl of gravy or her bowl of what chips and dip. I don't know exactly what that was. It looked orange, but I was like, is that gravy or what is that exactly? I'm curious. So as if it matters. So, uh, so anyways, so Kara is to also land upon Earth, and so now we have to go into a wide amount of, like, oh, hey, like, Kara has superpowers on this planet. Now she has to frequently try to fly, and, like, flying sequence, Bagal. And so, uh, Kara is to realize that the Omega Hedron is in Earth, but really, she wants to just uh, eventually fly a lot to the point of her just getting tired and then eventually sleeping. And then eventually she is to go and notice that there are a bunch of girls all playing this, I guess, softball. And so uh, Kara is just like, you know what? I got to get me some of that. Like, I got to be a part of that world. I got to be Ariel from Little Mermaid bizarrely right now because I guess that's where I'm going to. So, uh, so Kara easily goes and switches into dyeing her hair quickly and all of a sudden has way shorter hair, I guess. And so Kara is to go and, uh, go right into this school with a school uniform and go into the, uh, I guess the, the people that are easily letting this girl in this school and I guess like a principal or some dean or something. And so Laura or Kara is, or Ka <laughs> Kara is going and giving this dean a note, I guess dean of emissions probably, uh, 
so Kara is quickly uh, speedingly typing up this note that was to be done by Clark Kent. And so the Dean of Emissions is to uh, leave the room, come back while Kara is doing this super speed typing up thing to type up this letter, I guess, addressed from Clark Kent. But uh, they mentioned on the radio that... Uh, that when uh, Celine is to get into her car and drive away from her picnic uh, because she is telling her friend Nigel or Nigel that she's outgrown him once she has obtained this Omega Hedron from this picnic that she was to have with Nigel. Uh, the news bulletin is to mention that Superman is to go off on a distant planetary journey for some reason or another it isn't specific so there is no clark kent on this planet right now but evidently uh kara can make a note uh mentioning that he is <laughs> so uh the dean of admissions is to eventually look on the files to see if there's any uh notes uh written by kent and so this dean of admissions finds it and he's like Oh, yeah, I'm going to read this whole thing that uh, Clark just sent uh, me because you just typed it, didn't you? Didn't you, Kara? <laughs> You're a Supergirl, aren't you? <laughs> so, uh, so this Dean of Admissions believes every word, but now the Dean needs to know this girl's name. And we have, we're seeing that uh, Kara is now looking at some uh some name of some person on some wall somewhere and it it's Robert E Lee and so Lynn uh and so Kara looks like that and she's like well I'm Lee Linda Lee <laughs> Man you couldn't have come up with a much more cooler name than that like you couldn't have come up with like uh, my name is uh Macho Brando Macho. <laughs> My name is Cool. Johnny Cool. <laughs> no, you came up with Lee. Linda Lee. Oh, anyways. So, um, Bravo Macho. Yeah, mm, yeah, Bravo Macho. That's, that's my code name. So, <laughs> Linda Lee is to, of course just slide into a room that was only reserved for uh for Lois Lane's distant cousin twice removed Lucy Lane and like so then they're just going to be uh roommates now like both Linda Lee who's coincidentally the cousin of Superman and Lucy Lane who I guess is the second mother twice uncled sister brother thing of Lois Lane. I, I'm assuming it's probably her sister, probably her younger sister, probably. I don't know. I don't remember the whole relation thing because it's bizarre. So, um, Lucy Lane is like trying to mention that she's like really connected with all these people from the Superman movie, which she's actually not. But like eventually she'll get connected to Jimmy Olsen and I guess that's good enough. So, uh, so Lucy Lane is to ask Linda, it's like, well, hey, like, don't you have, like, much of luggage? Like, I have a million things with me, like, you just have one crappy looking bag. And so Linda's like, well, yeah, well, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna buy stuff when eventually I start to, uh, when I, when I'm here more, meaning that, like, Really, Linda is just like, yeah, I'm not going to have any clothes because I'm new to your planet. And, like, I couldn't find anything, like, cool through any thrift stores. So, <laughs> I didn't find any cool clothes in the thrift stores. <laughs> thrift stores anywhere. But anyways, so, uh, Lucy Lane is like, well, you can borrow everything from me. Go ahead. So... Len is like, well, great. I hope you're exactly my size because, like, Linda looks a little tall compared to Lucy. No offense, but, like, 
Lucy makes up for it in spunk, so we'll give her that. So, <laughs> it doesn't matter she's short. She's feisty. Sure, she's feisty. So, <laughs> so we push on here, and so, uh, so, uh, so Linda's easily going into sports and is doing, I guess, like cricket or like whatever bizarre sport deals with like sticks and balls that have to be like hit from the ground cricket is that it i don't know what that is i don't know what kind of sport they're doing in this movie because i just don't have that kind of time when they have a random oddball sport that's not like softball or baseball or badminton or whatever whatever like i was expecting what of is this just gonna be like a sports movie where we're just gonna have numerous sports being put into this film but i was okay with it because things happen so linda is to like go and protect one of her teammates from getting pelted with this ball and it crushes onto her back and just like smacks like powder and I'm like, yeah, like Linda is just having some some back power. Yeah, like if I were to get hit by that, I would be like, oh, my back. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> my spine is broken. But Linda, the thing just like freaking powders away. So uh, if anything, after uh, after the whole game, we have everybody that is to go into the shower. It's PG, ladies and gentlemen, so you're not going to get any... Ooh, like, let me see some of that Linda. Mm, no, it's PG, sadly. So the girls are in the shower, and so all of a sudden we are to see the people on the other side of the... The people that do not like uh, uh, Linda and Lucy. Uh, the girls that were given... Uh, Linda and Lucy kind of crap like we're eventually going and trying to mess with the the shower um temperature to eventually scold most of these teammates to make them probably lose skin or probably any number of things and Lucy or or Linda is to superhear this and she is to use her x-ray vision to see these girls tampering with the uh, the shower pressure or temperature or whatever the heck that that is. And so Linda is to bizarrely use her heat vision to like bizarrely be able to like uh, heat up the spot where this girl is using this wrench on. And then she also is using this heat vision to go and like spray parts of this water onto these girls to where they're running out of the shower and looking all like, like they're the butt of a joke. And all the girls that are in the shower are just kind of laughing at them because they're like, ha 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 you're not in the shower, so you getting wet actually seems funny. Ha 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 ha. Whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> pushing on. So, uh, so we are ha we eventually see that Nigel, uh, the villain that was tied to Selena earlier, we find out that he's this, like, Professor Snape-ish, like, uh, teacher at, uh, at Linda's, uh, school. So eventually he's telling him, turn to page 364. <laughs> and no, like, so, uh... So there's a time where uh, Nigel is asking this question to Linda, knowing full well that she probably won't have the answer for this because I don't, he doesn't think that she's smart enough because she's new girl. And all of a sudden Linda has the entire answer without looking at a thing of a keyboard or calculator or anything. Keyboard, doot, 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 doot. She's, she's going to play a little tune and then know exactly what's going on. So... Nigel is like, well, that's actually correct. And then all of a sudden, like, class gets dim dismissed and Nigel's like, how would you come up with that answer? And so Lucy Lane is like, 
well, excuse me, Professor, but I think there's some light that's reflecting off of Venus that is just making people smarter. I don't know what it is. Some bizarreish, uh, like, uh, weather patterns that are making people all of a sudden smarter at seconds of a time. And Nigel is like, okay, whatever, get out of my class. Smart ass. No! <laughs> this is a PG movie. They can't cuss in this movie. So, uh... <laughs> So Linda and Lucy get out of this class and Lucy's like, how did you know that answer? And Linda's like, well, like, if anything, where I'm from, like, we are like heavy into like mathematics to where there's like this bizarreish rung of mathematics that they do in their classes, bizarrely, or in at Krypton, which is technically not Krypton, it's Argo City, it's Krypton adjacent. So... Lucy is like, well, cut it out with the whole, like, being way too smart thing, because if you be way too smart, somebody's gonna be like, hmm, I need to dissect this woman. Because <laughs> she is too smart for her own good. Does she have a tumor inside of her that makes her way too intelligent? We need to find this out. Let's get a scalpel and let's poke into her. Because they won't be able to because she's Kryptonian. So anyways, moving on again. So, uh, so Selena is to eventually see that it seems that there is some, uh, gardener or some guy that is going to, like, be doing some side jobs for, like, construction-ish, like, things and fixing and, like, he's kind of like a fix-it man or a handyman and that is to actually be... Uh, yeah. where is he? Um, Ethan. There we go, Ethan. So, sadly enough, I didn't actually need to scroll all that much. Ethan, the guy who's Ethan, is actually Hart um, Boschner. It might, this guy might be familiar to some people because they might have actually seen the Bruce Willis movie Die Hard. The guy that was too... Uh, try to say, Hans, booby, I can, I'm your white knight. I can give you, uh, I can give you, uh, uh, what was to be John McClane because, like, same guy who was trying to orchestrate and get John Boy to try to, like, stop all the things going on in Die Hard. So if he looks familiar and if you've not seen Die Hard, then maybe you'll have to figure out wherever the heck else that you've seen this man in. But, I know him from Die Hard because immediately when I was rewatching this movie, I'm like, where have I seen that guy from? And then immediately I'm like, Hans, booby. <laughs> uh, and then I immediately thought of Die Hard. So anyways, going on. So Celine is wanting to get this man and wanting to magically deliciously uh, call this man up and have him work on something. But what he's really going to be working on is being put into a magical spell for for Selena to have him love her forever. But here's the thing, though. Ethan is to go to Selena's abandoned amusement park where, like, Selena was at first to try and use her Omega Hedron thing uh, to try to do some magical powers and such. And so, Ethan eventually is to go in there and is to drink some beer or some soda of sorts that is to eventually put this magical spell on him to have it be that the first person that this guy is to see, he is to eventually fall internally in love with them. So, Ethan is to all of a sudden, like, go, like, whoa, like, because really, like, we have this guy that, like, speaks a certain way in kind of this, like, barbarian-like terms, but then all of a sudden, once he is to be in love with someone, all of a sudden, he's starting to talk like Hamlet, Ham, Hamlet? Hamlet in Shakespeare. He's like, through, through bow breaks. The crater will fall and down will come Lindsay Lee, who I will love forever and all. Mm. 
<laughs> like we have we have Ethan that is going into like Shakespearean like talk every time he's around Linda Lee. And like it's not the exact same thing that I just said, but I'm making a jokey like thing where like we have Ethan who goes into these like bizarreish Hamletish Shakespearean things every time after he is to see Linda Lee for the first time and give her a little bit of that smooching. So, but before we get to that point, so Ethan all of a sudden is a, a coherent person, but he can't really see what's going on. So Ethan is just kind of going through this amusement park. I guess there's one part that he kind of goes into, which is this like haunted house, I guess to just showcase that this is in still this amusement park. And so Ethan is to basically make his way completely out of this amusement park. And so uh, Ethan is to eventually start roaming the streets, trying to uh, like get his bearings. And so Lucy was to tell Linda Lee, hey, like, how about you and me uh, go together to meet uh, Jimmy Olsen? Like Jimmy Olsen knows... Uh, Superman and Lois Lane, and maybe they can fill he can fill you in in a lot more than I can about either one of uh, Clark or Lois because he's actually spent time with them. So, uh, so all three of them were to meet at a Popeyes Chicken because Popeyes, I guess, is the sponsor of this movie. Maybe not, but anyways, so uh, they are to eventually start seeing. Uh, Ethan, who is just kind of like walking about, uh, even in the middle of the streets, cars are ducking out of the way. And so Linda, Jimmy, and Lucy all have to get out of the Popeyes. So that way you can still see the Popeyes sign somewhere because sponsorship. And Jimmy's like, oh, well, that guy must be on drugs. Like, I think, yeah, like these kids today and they're drugs, I tell you. <laughs> Like, yeah, Jimmy, go ahead and just say that he's on drugs. Don't say like, hey, we should we should like figure out how to save this guy. Because I don't know how many times that Jimmy would come into some situation like half cocked and then eventually have to get saved by Superman because Jimmy would just like go into a spot like the Hoover Dam or something. And then the Hoover Dam would just collapse. And then Jimmy's like, oh my god, save me Superman. And then Superman does save him. And then it's all good and all chicken babies. But anyways, moving on. So, uh, so Jimmy introduces himself to Linda and says, oh, and what's your name? And Linda is to say, uh, like, Kara. And... And Jimmy is like, see, what now? Are you Kara L from Krypton? Like, high five, Lucy. We have another Krypton on our, or Kryptonian on our hands. No, 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 no. Uh, Kara is to say, uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm cautious about this guy who's just in the middle of the street. And so we have Linda using her super speed to go into the bathroom and she bumps into one girl and like Linda's like, sorry, I'm in a rush. And the girl's like, I know when you gotta go, you gotta go. <laughs> I'm having fun with this review. So Linda is to turn into Supergirl and make her way to Ethan. But here's the thing. Selena is using her magical powers to have this, uh, this construction like like crane like thing uh crane construction like device thing i don't know what it's actually called like the uh like they all seem the same to me but this thing is uh is one of those where it has like one of those like crane contraptions where the like the thing opens up but it it like it, you you'll ha you can see it you can watch the movie and you can understand what i'm meaning one of those construction vehicles that has the little like uh, like, uh, snake-like device off to the side and, like, grabs things and then, like, tosses them down, like, that kind of contraption. So, uh, like, I'll call it, like, the crane construction vehicle, anyways. So, or the, the grabber, whatever, I don't know what it's called, 
Who cares? I could have actually Googled it, but I didn't have the time or it didn't matter to me. So this thing is going on the loose, this construction vehicle of sorts. Going and trying to nab after Ethan, opening and closing its mouth like a vicious villain in this movie. And because Selena is saying, come to me, I want Ethan back to me so he can see me and fall in love forever. And he cannot see anybody else. So we have to come up with some kind of construction device that is to hide away his eyes from anyone else. So there are some times when I'm seeing Ethan like doing these duck dodge and dips and dives through this movie and i'm like dude this guy who played ethan did he get hurt through like a bulk of this film because either that or his stunt devil because good god there were so many times with the way this movie was cut that i'm like man this almost missed this person or man did they get freaking clipped somewhere because man it looks like it's pretty near like like, there's some close times there that, like, either Ethan or his stunt double, like, clipped onto something or got hurt. Because it just looked like, like, these things were too close to call for some of these shots. But, I don't know. It could just be, like, the way the camera angle was. But still, it looked scary uh, sometimes. So, so this construction machine is just kind of smashing through walls of stores uh pushing cars to ram into uh into stores and stuff like that because like the like ethan is driving uh all these cars way off to the side of the road and like it's like man this is some pretty decent choreography thumbs up for whoever did the like the choreography of this whole thing so Eventually, like, Lucy is to try to run to get into the machine to try to stop this thing. But eventually she gets thrashed and then she gets, like, her head freaking knocked off to the side. And that's what easily knocks her out. Because if you remember the Smallville show, you'll know that everyone in that single freaking show easily gets knocked out by something. You, like, someone could get knocked out of that show by being hit with a pillow. That's how, like, bad, like, those knocked out moments would get. Where everybody would just, like, I'm like, dude, do they have, like, severe concussions problems in that show? <laughs> where it's like, you could never do a pro sport again, even if you wanted to, because you have, like, 30 concussions after all the times you've been knocked out on the show. So, uh... So Lucy gets knocked out. Uh, the crane thing opens up and picks Ethan because eventually he's just like, dude, I can't run anymore. And so this thing picks him up. And then all of a sudden, Supergirl comes flying in, grabs this device and and rips the part where Ethan is, rips that off and then just drops it off to the side. And eventually this whole like piece just stops going and... Superman had or Supergirl had taken care of it. So uh uh so Supergirl is to change back into Linda and so Linda is to open up this thing to help out Ethan. I guess to easily just say that uh Linda is going to have a love interest in here. It's not going to be the whole like some guy after Supergirl thing so that way we can kind of just conveniently easily give uh, Linda a love interest in this movie because if anything Supergirl or Superman would tell us that there has to be a love interest easily in a movie so this movie has to be even easier with that so Ethan is to see Linda and just be like oh my god who are you stranger like I need to know your name because uh from what uh, yonder window breaks, tis the east and Linda Lee is the sun. Ha! Ah. <laughs> I'm making a joke because, like, we have this guy who turns into this, like, uh, belching, like, uh, like uh, hands, like, butt scratching, whatever guy, to all of a sudden, like, when he is to uh, now be with Linda and seeing her, he's like, ha! Oh. 
I will forever be with you. Forevermore I shall. <laughs> and it's just so, like, goofy. But it is what it is. So, uh, so, like, these two, like, easily kiss and all kinds of things. So, like, Linda is having a heck of a time with, uh a guy that she had easily become smitten with. And so, uh, after this whole day of them being together, uh, Linda is to make her way back to her dorm to, uh, to eventually just bizarrely want to just kiss her mirror or almost get close to kissing her mirror because I guess she has to practice kissing now that she has a person to do it with. Which leads to Selena going, oh no, I will not have this Linda Lee going, this wimp character, going and stealing my man from me. No, I have to create some monster that you can't actually see for this wimp to be murdered by. So, all of a sudden, Linda Lee is to realize there is some monster that is to be outside of her dorm. And so... Linda, who had eventually had to go through a giant cylinder to turn from Supergirl to Linda, to Linda Lee, now Supergirl can just do it like that, where basically Linda can just, just fly through a window and it changes her from Lee to Supergirl. And I'm like, say what now? I'm like, also, could you imagine the way that they had to cut that scene? Like, I'm kind of interested how they cut that scene. Like, did they have to, like... They probably obviously had to do it twice and then, like, edit how it was, like, done in one cut. But, like, I'm kind of curious how they did that scene. Just because it kind of feels like something that they could not have easily done. But I guess maybe I was, I'm wrong. So, Linda is to go outside her dorm. And Selena is like, dude, where's the wimp? Who is this woman? She has an S on her chest. She's probably like that Superman guy. But who is she? She doesn't have a name, I guess. Maybe she has a symbol of hope slapped on her chest. But still, hope starts with an H. <laughs> so, Supergirl is to eventually try and fight this invisible enemy. But it just looks goofy in all honesty. Uh, this enemy starts, like, tossing her around. It does honestly look goofy. So, because Supergirl is getting beaten, like, she is just like, dude, I can't see this thing, so I'm just gonna take this, uh, this light pole, break it off, like, like anybody who would just be like, whoa, Supergirl! <laughs> <laughs> any guy that would do her wrong, that's the visual that she should show to any guy. Just like, <laughs> like, ah, <laughs> whoa, Supergirl. So Supergirl goes and breaks off this light post and goes out into the sky. And uh, Celine and her, like, assistant are thinking, like, dude, like, we beat her. She's flying off. Like, she's going back to... Uh, to Argo City, and she'll, like, never get the Omega Hedron whatever thing again. So, instead, Supergirl is going and collecting all of the lightning that is in the sky. She's going to Thor Ragnarok this up. And so, Supergirl is to then come back just to, like, I'm assuming that, like, Supergirl was actually supposed to touch the monster and electrify it, not just hold the, uh, the light, the lightning rod up to just have the lot, the lightning rod do all of the business, which is to, I guess, just find the monster and electrify it. That seems kind of weird to me, but Supergirl is to take down this, uh, lightning rod ash like monster. And so Eventually, we are to have, at some point, that uh, that Linda is to eventually start to track down where the Omega Hedron is. And it seems like she is tracking it down to a amusement park. 
which is to lead her back to meeting with uh meeting with Ethan. So uh because uh, Supergirl is now Linda Lee, and so Ethan is going and saying, Oh, hey, Linda, I have flowers, and I have chocolates for you, and I would desperately like you to have these things, because I love you, and, like, like we should get married, and have children, and right here and now, and, like, I'll, like, I'll support us for the rest of our lives, because evidently... How are you going to be able to? Because you're from another planet. We're from two different worlds. And and Supergirl's like, or Linda's like, you know? And Ethan's like, yeah, I know we're from two different worlds. Cryptically, or uh, metaphorically, not literally. So take that what, with what you will. And so... But Selena is to eventually go out to her amusement park and be like, hey, what the heck? Like, intruders... Like, don't you know there's a no trespassing sign? Don't you know that there's also a no Kryptonian sign here also? Don't you know that? Man, I wish they could have written all this in this movie. That would have been sweet. So, <clears throat> Selena is to get a little jelly. And so, Selena is to go and just be like, you know what? I'm going to make these, uh, uh, these amusement park... Uh, things that they are in spin faster upon faster upon faster because both Linda and um, Ethan had decided to go into this one uh, this one part of uh, one of the uh, rides uh, so that way Ethan could count the ways of how much he loves Linda Lee and so Selena uses that against them and uses it to speed up the ride that they are on. Eventually, Selena is to eventually finally stop the ride to only see that Ethan is in the car. And then all of a sudden, Supergirl just plops beside Selena is like, yeah, like, you know what? Like, I don't like what you're doing here, buddy. Like, I don't, I don't like it at all. You know what? Like, I'm just going to try to stop you right now if that's okay. So... <laughs> So Supergirl is to go and just uh, try and uh, like put these like metal uh, pieces like around Selena, I guess, trying to stop her from using her powers, like in the kind of very much like Spider-Man 3 defense where like Tobey Maguire Spider-Man goes and puts all these like metal rods uh, like, in front of Venom, so I guess he won't really get that far, which is kind of bizarre. But anyways, and so then, because uh, Ethan is transitioned from this one ride to this bumper car spot where he is trying to dodge and avoid all these, like, football player bumper car-ish like things. And so Ethan is to go and try desperately to dodge all these things, and eventually he jumps onto one of the cars himself and tries to control it and gets into one of the bumper cars. And so Selena then goes and uh, instead of dealing with, uh, or Supergirl goes and stops dealing with Selena and Supergirl goes and tries to save Ethan because it feels like he's in a heck of a lot of danger with all these bumper cars around, man. What's going to be an extreme measure after this? <laughs> is he going to go on a roller coaster that all it does is go, like, really, really fast? <laughs> and makes him want to blow chunks? What's next? So, uh, so Supergirl goes and, and grabs Ethan with bumper car in hand also. And flies him up to get out of this amusement park. And that just has Ethan get hit in the head with something to where he gets knocked out. Concussion, concussion number like four or five now. I'm, I've lost count. So Ethan is to eventually get ushered away onto, I believe, this beach. And so Ethan eventually is to wake, is to wake up to eventually go on and be like, well, I gotta go and find Linda. Like, I gotta go and protect her. Like, 
And, like, Supergirl is saying, like, dude, I think that she is well able to protect her own self. Like, I think she's perfectly fine. And so, but Ethan's like, but no, I have to protect Linda, who probably might already also be here, but I'm not exactly 100% sure. So then, uh... Kara has to make Ethan 100% sure, and so now Kara has to kiss Ethan, and then Ethan is going like, oh my god, Linda, what did you do with your hair? <laughs> no, Linda, like, Ethan realizes that Linda is Supergirl, and so now he's just like, oh, well, I guess you can really, like, handle yourself. Because when Ethan is to still, like, storm off, Supergirl is to fly in front of him, and Ethan is like, oh my god, like, you did a Superman move. You flew right in front of me. Like, what else can you do? Can you use your heat vision on people? <laughs> and all kinds of things? What else can you do? Because when Kara was to arrive on Earth, uh, there were two of these, like, Hail billy ash like trucker guys that were to try to take advantage of Kara. And so Kara immediately uses her like wind breath to blow one of the truckers away and then eventually takes out the other like they're nothing because obviously they aren't. Um, but yeah, like basically concussion city for probably any number of those people. But anyways, so uh, I just had to, like, reference that quickly because it's probably a scene that I forgot about, but I did remember. So, uh, so now the next bit is to have really just... Celine is now just like, dude, I need to come up with some real legitimate, like, scary-like power. So, uh, like, at first, Selena was trying to get rid of Nigel... Uh, like, when Nigel was to hit on other women, uh, Selena was to use her power to make this woman look like a joke in front of this whole entire party. Eventually, when Nigel is to go and see Selena, uh, Selena is to uh, riddle uh, Nigel's face with all kinds of blemishes and whatever. And so... But then Selena is finally making the consensus with her partner, of course... Uh, her partner in crime, which was actually, because I actually want to say the name for once in this movie, Bianca. Bianca. So when Selena and Bianca are putting their heads together, they're realizing that they need Nigel and his power to help them be able to get the best out of, like, being able to have real true scary-like power. So... We're getting towards the end here. Uh, like, I'm really just trying to push on as much as humanly possible to get closer to the end here. So, Celine is to eventually uh, go on and make this mount, this like huge mountain um, in this in this city where everyone is to see that Selena has this huge mountain and then this giant looking home. And so everybody's like, wow, that wasn't there yesterday, kind of thing. So, Selena, combined with Nigel, is to use their ultimate power to try and uh, get this whole house together. And then eventually, Selena is to uh, eventually go on and try to get Ethan to come back to her. And this time, Ethan does actually appear back to Selena. And so... And so Selena uh, goes and is, like, zombifyingly controlling Ethan to make uh, him her butler. So... Selena is kind of doing this parade around town with her car. And so all of a sudden, we are to start seeing uh, people in this town having like having like their signs up saying heck no selena must go heck no selena must go or whatever like they're bizarrely like protesting that selena is now here 
Like, as if, like, hey, the one mountain is, like, really inconvenient to the rest of the city. And, like, Selena hasn't really done much of evil besides, like, her just showing up with her car. So everybody is having these, like, protest signs trying to get rid of Selena, which I thought was goofy as heck. But anyways, so Selena is just kind of upset that there are people that are protesting her to be banished from this place. And so, uh, eventually Selena is to talk to Lucy Lane and it seems that we find these people are connected with Linda Lee. And so Selena is like, hmm, like we need these people as like a, a, a temptation for Linda to come back with us so we can beat her now. So, Selena collects all of uh, all of Linda Lee's friends and goes back onto the castle. So Linda Lee is to eventually appear as Supergirl and make her way to Selena's castle esh place. So Supergirl is to see that Ethan is chained up and he's like, "Oh, I need Linda to help me." Or Supergirl, whichever, because Selena doesn't actually know that they're one and the same. So Ethan is chained up, and so Supergirl is to try to make it to Ethan, but all of a sudden she is stopped by again another uh, invisible villain of sorts. No, like she gets like caught up in this glass thing. And so Selena is to go on and unchain Ethan, kiss him, and just look at like Supergirl and like, yeah, he's mine now, woman. You're going to go and have a good time at the Phantom Zone where you're going to be horrifyingly seeing your Zoltar and just be like, hmm, I feel so bad about being in the Phantom Zone, even though it's not actually all that bad in the Phantom Zone, it seems. I don't know what actual torture is it in exactly in the Phantom Zone. I don't... What is the torture part of the Phantom Zone? I didn't understand that exactly. Every time I ever see the Phantom Zone, like in Smallville or anywhere, like it doesn't look like a place that it looks like... It doesn't seem like hell. Like it doesn't seem like everybody's getting like whipped and chained and whatever. I don't understand how this could be a, a phantom zone where everybody, like, it just seems like they're in just some desert land that just, like, maybe there's not a whole lot of food sources, so maybe it feels like they're starving all the time in this, like, hot desert environment. Maybe that could be miserable, but I don't understand the misery of the phantom zone. Like, I don't understand, like, people should be, like, getting whipped or getting freaking, like, slapped up and down themselves. That would be, like, a horrific, like, moment for eternity. Just getting slapped a lot. Just, like, psh, 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 just all the time. But I guess that's not what happens in the Phantom Zone. So, so, Kara is to be forced to go into the Phantom Zone, where eventually she is to find her, her, I guess, relative, Zoltar. And... Zoltar is to consistently try to, like, merchandise this, like, squirt. Like, he's trying to sell this bad boy off. Like, his, like, his life depends on it. Because, I don't know, like, I guess, like, considering, like, Zoltar has nothing better to do, he just came up with his product and he's desperately trying to sell it. Maybe that's what ended up in those cans later on, where there was an actual soda that was actually called squirt. Maybe they were actually trying to merchandise that from... Um, from this movie. Maybe that was their tagline. I don't know. But it is kind of funny to think about now, is it? Okay. So. <laughs> so we push on here. And so uh, Zoltar is so adamant about this whole squirt device that that Kara desperately needs to try. And... And, uh, and Kara is just telling Zoltar that they need to get out of the Phantom Zone. There needs to be a way how. 
And Zoltar is like, well, I guess there is a way how, but it's the hardest thing that you can possibly do. So in other words, it's kind of like the Christian Bale thing where he had to like try to make it up with the rope up into the, the thing and everyone's chanting, hata, hata, he, 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 ha, 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 ha. Like, it's the same thing with that. Like, they recopied, like, Batman the Dark Knight Rises stole this whole thing of Supergirl. It's obvious now. I'm sure that's what they tried to do. <laughs> so, both Zoltar and Supergirl are climbing up this bizarre circular thing where there's, like, seemingly a tornado inside of a tornado. It looks weird. Like, there's this large tornado that is, like, inside tornado, and, like, this tornado is going around and around where these people are trying to climb. It looks so weird. And Selena is watching on as both Zoltar and Supergirl are making their way up this climb to try to get out of the Phantom Zone. And Bianca and Selena are trying to come up with some kind of something magical in some kind of book. Like, they're trying to, I guess, look up, like, the Phantom Zone in some book somewhere. Like, they're going to find the answer of that. Sure, I'm sure there is an answer for the Phantom Zone inside a magical book. Because I'm sure everybody knows about the Phantom Zone. So, Selena is trying to scramble to find some something that has a power to defeat Supergirl even in the Phantom Zone. Yeah, that doesn't quite work out, but Supergirl is almost like losing faith that she's going to make it up there, but Zoltar is like, dude, come on, like, you can make it, like, you're, like, uh, you're Krypton's second to last hope, so you gotta do this. So, Zoltar is trying to, like, push, uh, is trying to push Kara up there because, like, Zoltar is thinking, like, dude, I probably won't make it, but I want her to. So, eventually, like, Zoltar is trying to use all of his strength to get Kara to go and to make it and be safe. Then eventually, Zoltar eventually falls back and he dies, sadly. And Kara has to watch her Zoltar die. But then she's like, well, now I have to make it. I have to make it because I need to defeat Selina and I need to go back to Argo and with the Omega Hedron and save our people because one just died obviously because like Zoltar mentions that it was kind of dangerous that all of a sudden uh like a person could probably fall into the singularity of things and then like get destroyed forever I guess uh and so that was the caution of like Zoltar thinking that they probably shouldn't do that but Kara does survive Kara does make it and Kara makes it back onto earth to fight out Zelina yet again. So, Zelina is, er, is to try to use more of her magical powers to summon this dark shadow to appear, which is this huge, gigantic looking monster, which actually looks pretty sweet. But the thing that happens where Supergirl has to fight him kind of looks a little garbage, to be really honest. So, uh, so Kara eventually is like, well, I guess I have to fight another invisible CGI like monster or whatever. And so <laughs> Kara ends up in the arms of this monster and you can just kind of see like the special effects here. You just see these like giant hands or fingers in the screen and like Kara is getting like weirdly compressed or whatever, like an accordion with her body in this scene that just looks weird, like as if she's like some kind of, uh, God, what is the, uh, what is the perfect, like, uh, she's kind of, she looks like, uh, the Stretch Armstrong, like the arm part where you kind of see it, like, go back and forth. Like, she looks like that, and it looks bizarre. So, but eventually Kara is to eventually defeat this dark, shadowishly character, and... Eventually, once she does that, then Nigel has to tell Supergirl that uh, that she has to use Selena's power against her. And so Selena ends up using the Omega Hedron to eventually defeat Selena and put her into a mirror 
I guess, forever. And then so everyone after that is seemingly back to normal. Uh, Ethan is still making the consensus that he does love Linda Lee or he thinks that he loves her or something. Like trying to remember anything that happened in his past. And so eventually everybody is high-fiving and everybody is like, yeah, like everything is back to normal. I guess this mountain with this castle on it is just going to be there forever now. And because the magic didn't just resolve. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, like that's just the way that this movie ends with really just Kara getting the Omega Hedron and making her way back to Argo City to eventually give them the Omega Hedron. And Ethan is watching on as Kara is to fly away. And, uh, and he is saying goodbye to Linda or goodbye Kara or goodbye Supergirl. And so she's making her way to Argo City, and that's just the way the movie ends. Uh, so yeah, like, a decent film, a solid... I would say that this is a solid good film. Like, I would say that even with some bizarre things here and there, with stuff that Supergirl does have to fight, solid good movie. Um, just because I like this whole, like, Supergirl versus sorcery thing, that's what really sells you this movie, that it, like... It kind of feels like at least something um, that doesn't feel all as crappy as probably Wonder Woman 1984. Because <laughs> I don't like that movie. Some people might actually like it or some people might just whatever. But like I feel like this movie is leaps and bounds better than Wonder Woman 84. It seems like uh, the dialogue like seems to have like one kind of really decent fluent story. Where, like, Wonder Woman, like, the the writing of that just kind of goes to wherever it needs to be for the film. And, yeah. So, we get some magical stuff, but it makes sense. Where, like, the magical stuff for Wonder Woman 84 just needs to be whatever it needs to be. So that way they can kind of uh, convince you that, like, oh, there's a reason why Cheetah actually has to turn into Cheetah. There's a reason why... Uh, this person can just do anything now and be an anything villain to easily try to take out Wonder Woman and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, with that said, I am going to get out of here. I like this movie. Hopefully you liked it. Maybe you might not like it. Maybe you're just like, no, this movie's garbage. <laughs> this movie sucks because some people might have that feeling and that's perfectly okay. But also there are very few times you actually get to see a female superhero character and this movie wins me over so much better than a lot of those other ones so with that said i'm gonna get out of here goodbye everybody bye everybody